Photographing me? It's for a gallery. You're in my shot. Sorry. It's pretty, right? I try. <laughs> I'm not gonna steal the camera. Don't break it. How hard can it be? Put your jar on the strap. Like that? No. Um... <laughs> Come on. Smile. You ready? Here you go. There you go. I'm over. December 23rd. Phase one of the anomaly program completed. STA-1 is installed and is finally operational after days of delay. Solar flare activity has been unprecedented. Well, there's nothing quite like it. <sighs> this is Commander Oliver Greer on board Anomaly-1. Anomaly-1, out.
we begin. Love blossoms like a flower in its right time. Don't fall. If you go, will you miss me? I mean, maybe. You know, I feel I feel like anything's possible. Will you miss me? We realize how dry we were. How barren. How thirsty.
experiencing a lack of magnetic interference caused by unexpected solar activity. Transmissions might be affected. We're keeping an eye on the situation, but please pay off the over. Mission Control, this is Anomaly 1. There's a hell of a lot of activity up here. Mission Control, do you copy? Anomaly 1, go ahead. It's a flan. I told you what you're going to do. You're going to say goodbye, or you're going to jeopardize your future. And believe me, I did not work my ass off for you to run my name into the ground. Proceed on present course, Andrew. Mission Control, do you copy? Anomaly 1. Mission Control, do you copy? Oh, for God's sake, son, use your brain. She's a distraction. Opportunities like this do not come along every day. Haley, is anybody out there? Can anyone hear me? Over. No, please respond. Hello, is anybody out there? Can anyone hear me? This is Commander Oliver Greer on board Anomaly 1. Over. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. I don't know why he's like that. It's okay. I'm not what they want. Yeah, well, you're all I want. Hey. You're all I want. Hey, what is it? They'll come around. Okay? They'll come around. Huh? Hey, what, what's wrong? You can tell me. I'm pregnant. What? I'm pregnant. I don't know. I don't know. There's no one else. There's no one else. It's only you. You know? It's only you. <sighs> this is Commander Oliver Greer. Is there anyone out there? What are you gonna do? What are you saying, on? I repeat, is there anyone out there? Should we, should we, should we go announce the news now? Huh? Bailey's pregnant. Everybody. We don't know how it happened. I can do this. Can anyone hear me? Good evening to you. Tonight, 
The Anomaly 1 mission is in its third day since the launch of the Earth orbiter. The Anomaly program represents the next crucial step in executing President Kennedy's challenge of placing a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Commander Oliver Greer approaches the halfway stage to what has become the longest continual space flight to date, already eclipsing the achievement of Soviet cosmonauts just a few short weeks ago. Because Anomaly's telescopes are in orbit outside the distortion of Earth's atmosphere, these far-reaching optics enable us to see things that are otherwise invisible to the naked eye. These unknown, undiscovered quantities suddenly become visible with unprecedented clarity. Staying with news from outer space, we have with us in the studio this evening uh, Dr. Gabriel Montrose, the lead astrophysicist at the Deep Space Tracking Facility in Fort Irwin, California. Earlier today, the professor announced an upcoming astronomical event, the arrival of what is being called the Beit Lam Comet. Welcome, Dr. Montrose. Uh, now, as I understand it, you have discovered some kind of new comet, and this particular comet is heading for Earth? Yes, that's correct. And uh, when did you and your team make this discovery? Well, we've known about the Beit Lam Comet for over a decade, but we, we didn't actually see it coming until about three or four days ago. It's one of the most quickly approaching comets we've ever seen. Now, uh, do correct me if I'm wrong, Professor, but um, we have seen comets in the past, all throughout history, in fact. Uh, do we have any cause for concern here, uh, for alarm? Uh, in terms of proximity, how close are we talking? Well, most foreign objects, when they enter Earth's atmosphere, they, they usually break up, they sort of burn off. <clears throat> but with the Beit Lam comet, because of its current speed and trajectory, we think that this comet will enter Earth's atmosphere somewhere between the next 48 to 72 hours, and then it'll exit again moments later. Entering and exiting the Earth's atmosphere. That's correct, yeah. Uh, well, doctor, forgive me, but um, if this is such a significant event, uh, why are we only hearing about it just now? Well, in many ways, I'm just the messenger. We know about the Beit Lam Comet because of its discoverer, Dr. Noel Fitz. And Dr. Fitz actually theorized its approach probably about a decade ago. And actually, when he came out with his theory, he was completely dismissed by the astronomy community, completely dismissed. Well, Dr. Montrose, has, has any sort of similar event of this magnitude ever occurred before in history? Never. Never, no. And, and I don't think that it ever will again. This is completely unprecedented, you know, which is why we don't, we don't have a hypothesis for such an event. But who will be able to witness this event? Everyone. For one moment, it will be completely light. Everything.
I made your favorite dinner. The food's still on the table. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how late it was. I sometimes just lose track of time. Up all night again? Mary, what's happening? This is the most beautiful thing that we will ever see. It's me. I'm on a frequency. I miss you. I miss you so much. I think we got lost. Maybe we've always been lost. We've become strangers to ourselves, to each other. Most of our lives are spent searching. Blinded by the dark. And then we find we're broken. Separated hearts lose their rhythm to beat together, to beat as one.
ready to proceed with this? Well, what are you going to do?
infinite. Made for one another. I'm here. Made for love. We're undone by our own humanity. By moments of nearness. But we break with distance. When we are alone. It gets so dark we almost wish it was never light. And then, in one moment, one precious moment, a light shines in the darkness.